In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.
the funeral mass of one of our greats, uh, one of our warriors of the hard life of a priest. I think when he's in Oxford, he had to live in a shed in the back of somebody else's yard. When he went to Andamooka, he had to live in a container. The priests of those decades did it hard. Arthur, we have been burying Arthur, we will bury one of the great storytellers of the diocese. Even the day before he went into St. Joseph's, when I visited him, he told stories about Frank Christ. A man who gave so much of his life to the diocese, to the people of the diocese. Things about him I never knew to now. Like when he was studying in Rome propaganda, he became captain of the Australian Bulls football team that the seminarians formed. But he was there, and then he served in some ten, some, had some ten transfers as a priest, including four parishes. The parishes were Loxton, Kubapidi, Wayala, Kadena. It was 26 years at Wayala and became very much part of that community. And in the providence of God, Arthur died on the feast of Our Lady Help of Christians, the title of the parish he served was that long. And going through some of his memorabilia from the day he was ordained in Rome, he had taken a phrase from the letter of Paul to Timothy. I would remind thee to fan the flame of that special grace which God kindled in thee when my hands were laid upon thee. So we come now with condolences, especially to Frank and Des, to all the wider family. We come now to celebrate the Requiem Mass for a truly good priest. Please be seated and Frank will give the eulogy. I'm sorry, before that we'll put the symbols on. So stay seated. The first symbol we'll place will be the priestly stole. And this one is decorated with the stir Now the Jimmy Panton, the administrator of the cathedral, is placing the stall. The chalice, which was presented by the diocese to Arthur on his diamond jubilee, is now placed on the coffin by Father Kevin Matthews. The breviary, which he prayed every day, is now placed, because it has the word of God, is placed on the coffin by Father Brian Matthews. The oils that Arthur used for the anointing of the sick are now placed on his coffin by Kath. And the rosary beads which symbolise his devotion to Mary are placed on the coffin by Joy. The priests who brought Arthur's body into the cathedral for this Mass were all associated with him at different times in his ministry. 
So now, Frank, we'll have the eulogy. Knowledge. 
on that and other subjects, being such an avid reader. There's many books in the house that Gladstone are going to take some work in removing. Do we have any takers? Being a music lover as well, there are a ton of CDs and records. Art was very social and loved a good gathering. And loved, he was a good, he loved good company and he was good company with a keen sense of humour. We all will miss him. And now let us join the story of Arthur to the story Jesus. Let us pray. Hear with favour our prayers, which we humbly offer, O Lord, for the salvation and the soul of Arthur Hackett, your servant and priest, that he, who devoted a faithful ministry to your name, may now rejoice in the perpetual company of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Jesus Christ is the living stone, rejected by humanity, but chosen by God and precious to God. Set yourselves close to Jesus, so that you too, the holy priesthood, that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be the living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see how I'm laying in Zion the precious cornerstone that I've chosen, and the ones who trust it will not be disappointed. That proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring people down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was a faith in store for them. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing praises to God who called you out of darkness into wonderful light. The word of the Lord. see the wonders you have done, then my heart is truly filled with joy. O Lord, how deep are your designs in me, the foolish person never understands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, 
holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience, forbearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As God has forgiven you, so you must, you must also forgive. Above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. You are called to this one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, our Creator, through him. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know the one who sent me. From this moment, you know and have seen. The Gospel of the Lord.
members are they, right? Preparing for his ordination. And from that time until his peaceful passing here in Piri, Hunt was a loyal priest to his God and to his people. He remained faithful to the gifts he received. As Sister Patty Faulkner, congregational leader of Good Sam, wrote to Bishop Greg, he was faithful to God by being faithful to his people. During his time at Port Lincoln, uh, he was part of a priestly ministry to the hinterland. And over these last days, people from Woodna, Kimberclee, Cowell have thought fondly of arts interest in them from that time and to the present moment. To someone he had baptized who'd call out in the streets of Lincoln, Hey, Carmel Hazel. Cooper Peedy was a great place for art. Well, we passed on a message from one of the families there that loved him so much. But Wild West was a bit different from Cooper Peedy. He had two school boards for starters. And it's almost all of the plan giving going to supporting those schools. Uh, there was little left for parish development. He arrived in town to find that his predecessor had taken up the gift of a Good Samaritan sister of a pastoral associate. Jill O'Brien and he, with whatever curate was around, formed a parish team during the 70s and a groundbreaking parish formation model which only gained solidity because art was open to whatever God had in store. Jill was produced a prayer for Arthur, and it's at the back of the church. In while or after Wes at St. Teresa's had set me on a an old time course of what a priest was to be, thankfully I was accepted by Arthur into the deeper meaning of priesthood as his assistant for five years in Wild West. So it was a privilege to be his parish priest for five years during the last years of his life. His lively priesthood was in evidence every day. He might use roses from his front garden as conjoined expressions of affection for people and they appeared on the church altar. He revealed the meaning of that famous duet from the pearl fishers from the depths of the temple to me. Peter Weir used it in his film Gallipoli to symbolise mateship. He was forever delving into his fund of sources to help answer them with the cross quiz. He also posthumously uh, won a quiz of Paul Burke ran. And from his sources he made clear to people the meaning of a moral parish life of liturgy and scripture. Today the chosen first scriptural reading from Peter is a paragraph which the revised New Jerusalem Bible entitled A New Priesthood that has a footnote with the daring metaphor of a living stone the imagery changes to building Israel's titles of honour are given to the new people of God whose priesthood consists of singing the praises of God. Hart was a very good singer of praises to his God, literally and figuratively. I once mentioned to Art, Frank mentioned about how he was so fond of grief, I once mentioned to Art that in praying the office I would skip the hymn. In my callow way I used to say that this was a public action, not a private prayer. Art corrected me by pointing out the gems in such hymns. From Stanbrook Abbey Hymnal for today's morning prayer, We bless you, Father, Lord of life, to whom all living beings tend. 
the source of holiness and grace, our first beginning and our end. Art could guide people to see where they're living the intended, helping them see the scripture come down on them with light and love. I would plunder Arthur's mind for the seven ideas, the good sermons that Frank talked about, often having to credit my best lines to the Gladstone priest in residence. And looking for similar stimuli, I contacted some who knew Art well. Uh, Sister Bernard Corboy makes these comments. I think that Arthur was ahead of his time and his openness and large-heartedness in his ministry as a priest and a parish leader. In the way he could work closely with women and men who made up his community of faithful followers using the gifts they were willing to offer. And being able to work with different personalities, he was a good listener, able to be flexible, adaptable, a compassionate and generous pastor. His humour and capacity for enjoyment in the company of others was infectious. Just as a side, uh, Art's party trick uh, was standing on his head, even in his late forties. That much of the consternation of those standing around. But he goes on, and above all, Arthur was a man of prayer, a relationship with his God at the very, that enabled all of the above qualities to be lived out. There are other places that Art served in that could say similar things about him. Um, there are a cloud of witnesses who saw the goodness of the man. His idea of retirement was not to go into a home, but to be at home with the parishioners around him. It was though he had taken a lot of his past parish people into his Gladstone memories, and especially the beloved people of Our Lady of Christmas Parish, who he served for those 26 years. A couple of years ago, he made a half-hearted attempt at moving to Perry. Frank with his town council background, took him on a tour of likely abodes, and that showed me the chosen spot, and we went home to Gladstone. The next morning he rang and said he wouldn't move, because the new place was not near a church, and was devoid of a faith community intimacy. He wanted to prolong his independent living, of course, and gave short shrift to going to be any at St. Joseph's. He didn't relish the possibility of having to live in community with whom, whomsoever the clergy fate happened to visit on him. I think some of us have those rather prescriptive uh, ideas as well. But that is why I remember with gratitude his acceptance of me as assistant priest, and then later he gave me a home and an office as so I worked on the renew process. It was an honour to be invited back into his ambulance. Though I occasionally got intimations of what he gave up by having me around. One day I came home to Jeff blaring out full bore for the house. One of those luxuries we have when we live on our own. I'll conclude uh, from a selection of different endings. We had to be grateful, singing to God in our hearts. As a chosen of God, then, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves in heartfelt compassion, and generosity and humility, gentleness and patience. With the gratitude, sing psalms and hymns and inspire songs to God in your hearts. In his marvellous voice, he led us in the Salve Regina at bishops and priests' funerals. We will do the same for him today. And then there was Art's place. I mean, there's that uh, edifice next to Our Lady of Christmas Church, uh, a courtyard. That's Art's place. The uh, new revised Jerusalem Bible doesn't talk about rooms in heaven for us. It talks about places. In the Father's house, there are many places to live in. And Art's saviour went before him to prepare 
his final place. So there you are, you've got two conclusions. So, before the Peace by Our Lady on Christians, the Ascension Day, one senior Arthur Joseph Hackett passed over and upwards. A great priest and God's delightful human being. Stand now and make our prayers and faithful for Arthur. My sisters and brothers, we pray to our loving God who inspire us to live your mission of bringing hope and encouragement to all we encounter. With confidence in your generous providence and praying with Saint Mary the Killer, we now place our needs before you. For Bishop Greg, our priests, and all who minister to your people in the diocese, that, inspired by the patron of our diocese, Mary McKillop, they may be open to, cre to creatively face with faith and courage, the challenges facing our world and church today. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. May all whose lives have been touched by Father Arthur's ministry, friendship, loyalty, and compassion, know they are blessed. May they radiate the same love and compassion to others in their Lives. Lord hear us. Lord hear us. May all family, sorry, may all the families and those many friends who offered Father Arthur a warm and hospitable welcome in his various parishes be aware of the nearness and the beauty of God in their surroundings. And the love of God in their family and friends. The Lord hear us. We give thanks for all who have cared and ministered to Father Hackett during his long life, especially the communities of men who he lived, and particularly in those last years. May their commitment and dedication be a sign of compassion of our world today. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. May Father Arthur's family, his fellow priests, his friends, and all who mourn his death find comfort in God's promise of new life. As they mourn the loss of this good and faithful servant, Lord, hear us. Through the strong faith of doubt, in his early life, Father Arthur experienced the love and compassion of God. We remember his parents, Mary and Francis, and his siblings who have gone before him, Michael, Kathleen, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Tom, and Molly, also of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. May the closeness of family and the joys of which friendship can bring to our lives continue to be important beacons for us. Draw us into you, our God. Lord, hear us. Loving God, we ask that our faith and hope be renewed by your Spirit, that we may act more justly, love more tenderly, and walk humbly with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray now, my sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Arthur, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our risen Lord. In Christ the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not taken away. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them and with you. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with our end we acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Lord Jesus Christ, you 
century of apostles. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Arthur, your servant and your priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as, it, as unveiled in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now have the commendation for us. As the priests gather around now, we will sing the Echase and Chernos, which Arthur means behold the priest. And it was a very popular hymn amongst the clergy, and Arthur himself loved it and often in country. So, with his brother priests around him now, let us sing priest. Priest together according to the order of Melchizedek. And during the blessing, Father um, Leon and Brother Brian, uh, just as Arthur was parish priest and served so many, <coughs> so Father Brian and Father Leon were the two of his last parish priests who served him. So let's now sing, brothers, the adventure.
we now commend our brother Ahad in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Arthur in his life and in his priesthood. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Arthur, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his love and present him to God for us. Arthur, may Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his love and present him to God for us. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God for us. Arthur, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham, the company of the saints. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Whoever believes in me, even though that person die, shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
That's about right. Just ask the priest to come forward and we'll just uh, escort uh, Arthur to the corner. You can see, in front.